Verse 2. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves mm -hmm. and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the land of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Verse 3. In, now, in other words, we also have the Egyptians and the Ammonites and the Moabites. Those three nations weren't mentioned in Genesis or Deuteronomy 7, were they? But we were married them with the other people. Keep reading. Verse 3. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked his clothes and just tore them off. Just, he was that heartbroken. And plucked off the hair of my head. And just literally tore the hair off his head. Just start pulling his locks out. And of my beard. And just turn his beard out. That sounds sound like a man to me that was very offended. That sound like a leader that was very much offended by the actions of the people. That they had begun to integrate and marry these other nations instead of being satisfied with the most beautiful women that Yah put on the face of the earth, the daughters of Israel. The most beautiful daughters, lively women. We were sitting down, our women were sitting down having babies. Five, six, seven, and eight of them. Other women having one baby and almost killing themselves. You understand? They can't, they're not alive like the children of the Hebrew daughters. They said the more we oppress them, the more they multiply. You want to see our people, you can't go out to England Hills in Amelie Village where they're prospering at. You want to see them multiply, you go where they're oppressing them at. Go down to West End. Go out there in the Moosewood Garden. Go up there and win tears. Open the door, open the door, they run out like a bunch of you think they were. I mean, eight or nine of them just run out together. Like, what is it? You understand what y'all been doing in here? You understand? The more they oppress them, the more they multiply. You know, oppression and, and uh, Anxiety and stress. The other women can't have babies when they're stressed out. Did you know that? They get under stress and anxiety and frustration. They get to have a miscarriage. You oppress our women. And then babies coming out like forty going north. You understand? Th these women here. Keep reading. <laughs> then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the Elohim of Israel. Now who came before Ezra? Every man and woman that trembled at the word of Yah came to Ezra. Those that didn't tremble and didn't pay more attention, they weren't there. But every man that trembled came to him because they seen that he was upset. He was being torn apart, and they wanted counsel. They wanted to know what he wanted the people to do because they knew he was a godly man. Because of the transgression of those that had been carried away, and I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice, I rose, arose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto Yahweh, my Elohim, and said, Oh, my Elohim, I am ashamed and blushed to lift up my face to thee. My Elohim for our iniquities. Notice he said our. He didn't say their or y'all. He said our iniquity because he knew the whole nation was responsible as a people. For 
our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day, and for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the land. That's why we were in slavery, folks. That's why we were separated out of our land. That's the reason we were thrown into this condition. Because of our people wanting to do what Yah commandment always told us not to do. There is no commandment that suggests that we integrate with any people. We were people that were meant to be alone. We were not even reckoned amongst the nations. He read to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. And now for a little while, little space, grace has been shown from Elohim to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in this holy place that our Elohim may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in bondage. In other words, it's just a small remnant of them that left Babylon. Most of them wanted to stay. And then the few that left Babylon and went back to Jerusalem, they started marrying these strange women as soon as they got back. As some of y'all want to do as soon as y'all get home. And see, I said some of y'all. Now, don't roll your eyes at me now unless you're guilty. Go ahead. For we are were bondmen, yet our Elohim hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia, to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our Elohim, and to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Yehuda and in Jerusalem. And now, O oh, our Elohim, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servants, the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it, it is, is an unclean land, with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to the, another with their uncleanliness. Now let's, let's expedite everything where time is going on. Let's go to Ezra 10 chapter so I can show you what happened. Let's go to 10 and 1. Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of Elohim, there assembled unto him out of Israel every great, a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, we have trespassed against our Elohim. We have taken strange wives of the people of the land. 